Hello, music lovers, and welcome to the channel. Thanks so much for dropping by. And if this is your first visit here, just know that I love music. I love talking about it, and uh, it could be anything. It could be anything from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Could be talking about current events, maybe an album review, a concert review. Who knows? I figure, you know what? If I find it interesting, maybe you will too. And that's what this video is about. This past weekend, I saw something as a music lover that just blew me away, and I wanted to share it with you because I figure maybe somebody out there in this audience of fellow music lovers will appreciate it too. Um, I was fixing a laptop over the weekend, and if you've ever had to do that kind of thing where you're reinstalling operating systems and all that crap, you know, you're kind of slave to, you know, taking up a lot of time installing updates and all that. I was watching a lot of YouTube videos, and one that came up was this cover of Yes's Close to the Edge. This band was covering Close to the Edge. Now, Close to the Edge is a very complex piece, takes up the whole side of an album. Uh, it, it is a Yes epic and it's probably my favorite yes song so it was kind of dialed into it uh and uh it was riveting <laughs> it was the best cover version of a yes song i think that i have ever seen i've seen some other people cover close to the edge and they did a respectable job but this was just downright brilliant and so i started watching other songs that these guys covered and i what i saw was that they were doing a lot of like pop classics uh, and a lot of classic rock and a little bit of prog from like the 60s and 70s and 80s. And I saw just a lot of tremendous performances, people playing multiple instruments, really great vocals, great arrangements, so much talent. I mean like insane amounts of talent. They go by the name Band Geek, and I'm going to put a link to it down below so you can check it out for yourself. Now, just to back up a little bit, one of the leaders of this band, I thought he looked a little bit familiar and uh, did a little bit of digging. And apparently his name is Richie Castellano. He's the leader of this band of geeks. And uh, he is currently a guitar player in Blue Oyster Cult. Uh, he was associated with them around 2000. He was like the sound guy out on the road with them and then eventually worked his way into the band since about 2004. He played some bass and uh, now he is a full time like guitarist keyboard player. And um, this guy has got some chops. He can play every instrument. Uh, he became friends with Bumblefoot. Uh, when he was a teenager growing up in Brooklyn, you may recall Bumblefoot used to be with Guns N' Roses. Um, he was in Guns uh, probably around the time of Chinese democracy uh, and left shortly before, uh, you know, Slash and Duff came back in. Um, and Bumblefoot is just a tremendously talented guy. He taught Richie a lot about how to lay down tracks and record in the studio. And then Richie also became friends with uh, a guy by the name of Rudy Sarzo. And yeah, Rudy played with Ozzy Osbourne. He was a bass player. He also played in BOC and he's played with a number of other bands. Anyway, Rudy taught Richie how to do a lot of video editing and everything. So these are the mentors that Richie had. And so Richie is one of these guys that can go into a studio and he can lay down every track and record every instrument, every vocal layer, and he can produce it himself. He's made albums on his own. He has recorded like Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody by himself, uh, the Abbey Road Medley by himself. I'm gonna put a link to all this below. Just insane amounts of talent. And um, he basically, got together with a bunch of his friends who were also really, really brilliant and can play a lot of instruments, insanely talented. And they started this audio podcast where they would just, you know, play some covers and talk about movies and really geek out like, you know, kind of like a Big Bang Theory kind of thing. Uh, then eventually it turned into a video show where they performed covers. And, um, and so the covers that they do, like I said, they cover a wide range of songs. Uh, Richie's wife is in the band. Anne-Marie is just insanely talented. You're going to hear me say that insane talent word over and over because that's just what comes to mind when I'm watching these, these guys. Uh, Anne-Marie is uh, a singer, a songwriter, multi-instrumentalist. I think she teaches like high school music. Um, she's the one that sings Close to the Edge. I'm going to get to that here. Um, this version of Close to the Edge that they recorded 
is the best yes cover I've ever seen. And I'm going to take it a step further. I think that they play close to the edge better than yes does now. And I want to stress now, I'm not going to compare them to the Bruford Chris Squire band of yesterday. I'm talking about this band that I'm watching cover close to the edge that I'm going to put a link to down below. They master this song. They play it brilliantly and they do it much, much better than the band that's called Yes currently plays it now. And there is just no two ways about it. One of the guests on this performance is a guy by the name of Chris Clark. Now, Chris Clark is currently in a band called Brand X. And that's a band that dates back to the mid 70s. Uh, it's a band that actually featured Phil Collins on drums. He was kind of in and out of that band when he wasn't doing Genesis or making solo albums. I think he left them around 1980. But the band has got a couple of core guys, but for the most part, it's like a revolving door kind of band. But whoever goes through those doors has got some chops. It's kind of like when you go into the Frank Zappa band, you got to know your shit. And so um, Chris Clark's amazing on the keys. Uh, Richie is playing bass, does a tremendous job handling Chris's parts. The guitar player does a great job handling Steve's parts. The drummer is awesome. Anne Marie's vocals are beautiful, especially when you get into the I get up, I get down section of, of the song. That whole section is just so beautifully done. It's gorgeous. It, Like I said, it blows away what Yes is doing now. There's no two ways about it. I want to hear from you Yes fans. You got to come clean on me here. Come on. Um, and, um, I'm going to include a playlist down below of stuff that I saw over the weekend that was really impressive to me. You know, like I said, they cover the gamut of songs from, you know, the sixties and seventies and eighties. Uh, Anne Marie did a beautiful version of a song called You Don't Own Me, which was made popular by Leslie Gore back in the mid sixties. Uh, I mean, the vocals are just out of this world out of this world, make the hair stand up kind of stuff here. They do a brilliant cover of Michael Jackson's Thriller. And they probably did it around Halloween because they're like in, you know, costumes and everything. And, uh, you know, Anne-Marie handles the vocals brilliantly. You know, that's a Quincy Jones song. Lots of production going on in that song. You got Vincent Price. They cover it all. They just do an amazing job. They do like How Deep Is Your Love by the Bee Gees. Lights by Journey. They do a duet, Richie and his wife, of Under Pressure by Queen. Then they have Bumblefoot does a couple of songs with them. Uh, they do Aces High by Iron Maiden. I had never really heard Bumblefoot sing before, but he does an amazing Bruce Dickinson. Uh, they cover that song really, really well. Uh, and one of my favorites is they do Stonehenge by Spinal Tap. I mean, if you've seen Spinal Tap, you know, the whole Stonehenge part is, you know, probably one of the funniest, one of the best parts of the whole film. And they just do an amazing job on that song. And, um, you know, you got to check out another Yes cover. They do The Calling, which is a, uh, you know, song from the last uh, album that they did with Trevor Rabin. And uh, they just completely own that song. And a beautiful, amazing version of that. So anyway, I'm going to put a link to all this stuff down below. I want you guys to check it out. Let me know what you think about the insane passion that these guys have. You can tell that they're having a lot of fun. You can tell that they're good at what they do. They don't care about if you think it's cheesy, if you think it's... Uh, there's no such thing as a guilty pleasure here. There's just a lot of pleasure. And uh, it kind of just reminds me of, you know... Follow your passion. Do what makes you happy. Uh, it could be playing music. It, it could be doing anything. You know, find something that you really enjoy and do it and find other people that you can share it with because I think it makes life a whole lot better. And you know, it's really, really cool to see these guys doing what they do. And I got to give props also to Andy and Vin and uh, Jarrett and, um, and Richie for the other guys that kind of like round out this incredible band, Band Geek. You got to check them out. Links below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Hit the subscribe button and uh, I'll be back soon with another video. All right. Talk to you later.